from the new gravel trails at Rouge River Park in Markham, Ontario, representing heavy rollers. Welcome to the GCN Show. Hello and welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, what are cyclists really thinking? And I mean, what are we thinking when we go out on our bikes for hours at a time? We've got big news for global fashion as the intriguing cycling jumpsuit is launched by high street fashion brand Zara along with a full gravel range. The UK's biggest closed road sportif employs a fun sponge and also Ollie Bridgewood is dropped from GCN Inspiration. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that big cycling is coming for your local bike shop. Kind of. I mean, I'm not sure there is such a thing as big cycling, but still, the mega brands like Trek, Pon, who own Canada and Cervelo, and Specialized 2, are buying up local bike shops like no tomorrow. The Carrytown bike chain in Virginia is one of the latest to be hoovered up, but where does this stop? Is this another nail in the coffin for the independent local bike shop? Perhaps. It's got to be said. I hope not. Well, yeah, me too. We also learned this week that Specialized are launching affordable urban e-bikes. They're repurposing their Globe brand from just a few years ago. Details are scarce, but they have released this image, leading us to ponder why on earth there is integrated cacti. That just seems like a bit risky. Yeah, risk of puncture, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Well, any ideas, let us know down in that comment section below. Now, though, let's move on to what do cyclists think about when we ride our bikes? This is a question often asked by mm. non-cyclists, isn't it? What on earth are you thinking of when you ride your bike for so long? Yeah, well, bike riding is not only good for our physical health, but our mental health too. It's that one time where we can just completely switch off. No phones or social media or emails, no distraction, just you, your bike, your thoughts. And it's a great opportunity to have some, well, me time, isn't it? And just declutter your mind. True, and actually it is a great opportunity, isn't it, to think about both everything and also nothing simultaneously. When I get back from a ride, I can pretty much never tell someone what I've been thinking about. No. It's just empty, empty space. What do you think about? I think about a lot on the bike, actually. Now I spend a lot of time thinking about how hard it is and how slow I am now no. compared to what I used to be. <sighs> Am I going fast enough? Do I look fast? Do I look good on the bike? Checking yourself in shop windows oh, as you ride past. Of course. And another really random thing I think about on the bike is what would happen if a squirrel ran out in front of me, went into my front wheel? Like, what would happen? I don't know why. I spend a lot of time thinking about that situation. Squirrels? Yeah. I can put your mind at rest. Has that happened to you? Yeah. It's not that bad for the cyclist. We'll just leave it there. Okay. Okay. Also, another thought I have on the bike is taking in the surroundings a lot more. I feel like when I was training and racing, I spent a lot of time suffering and just, you know, looking down at my numbers. But now, I look up and take in the views and appreciate that. Yeah, that's cool. Views, open spaces, bit of quiet. Some of the best things about cycling. Although, if I'm being completely honest, whilst I do notice them when I'm riding, it's a bit like when someone tells you to practice mindfulness. Your, your brain instantly switches off onto something else, mm. isn't it? I find my mind drifts. Yeah, onto squirrels. Onto yeah. squirrels, yeah. <laughs> that's all well and good when you're on nice, quiet country roads, but that's not always the case, is it? There's times where you're commuting in a city and you have to think about the traffic and, you know, avoiding getting hit by a car. It's not always that calming, is it? No, but I find when I'm commuting, I'm often thinking so hard about what are they going to do next? I.e., are they going to pull out, step out? Have they seen you? Exactly. But weirdly, I find that quite relaxing because it, it takes your mind off that mental treadmill and onto more mundane, but arguably more important things, like staying alive. Yeah, and I guess that's true for the case if you're riding somewhere new and you need to follow directions, you're constantly thinking about where you need to go and not taking the wrong route. Yeah, often you actually just don't have the opportunity to delve mm. into your thoughts, do you? But on long rides, you often do. Like back when we were full-time bike riders, man, on we all had a day, lot every of day time. to spend. Yeah, what were you thinking about then? Well, I'm not sure if anybody else did this, but you know, it's a long time to be on a bike, especially if you're riding solo. You have to find a way to entertain yourself. So if I had a hard effort, I used to pretend I was in a bike race, solo, off the front, and I was going to win. And if the effort went well, 
I would do a little cheeky victory celebration, but I had to make sure no one was looking or no cars were around. Did yeah, you really? I didn't want to look like a weirdo, but yeah. 500 watts! Yes! <laughs> One minute max! You have to celebrate in case you do actually win a race. It's true. Never yeah, victory happens, celebrations so. don't happen naturally. No, they we have take to plan practice. them. Yeah. yeah, they absolutely take practice. What about you? What, did you? what did you think about? Well, I also daydreamed a lot. Might have won a lot of imaginary bike races, which helped with motivation. Exactly. Uh, I also find, I think a lot about stuff. Like, that's true to this day as well. And I think actually, it's then easy to get stuck thinking about stuff. And it's why I like riding my bike like fast, like going like hard, because then you don't have time to think about stuff. You just focus on what you're doing, mm. like push harder on the pedals, push harder on the pedals, push harder on the pedals, push harder on the pedals. And then it just takes your mind off things. Yeah, true. What what was uh, what did you think about when you rode King Alfred's Way for push seven, on the 17 push hours? Hard on the pedals. Um, no, I... <laughs> 17 hours straight, push harder on the pedals. Basically, yeah. No, no, don't push harder on the pedals. Don't push harder. Yeah. No, I actually thought about um, directions, like you said. Mm -hmm. So you just spend a lot of time thinking about, like, where's it going next? When you're riding off-road, you have to think about where you're going in terms of line choice. That's very relaxing, too. Um, I thought about eating a lot. Vlogging, of course. Vlogged a lot. Um, <laughs> That's what you so vlog. Cool. Yeah, so cool. thanks. Um, and then, actually, for the last part of it, I just mainly questioned my life choices. Mm, that's, yeah. Did you do any uh, singing this time? No, it got, it got, singing? no, it got yeah. too um, emotionally dark to sing. Oh, wow. Yeah, there was no singing. It was just like, make it stop. <laughs> make it stop. Make it stop. Same for me, really. I spent a lot of time when I was racing thinking about what if there's a crash in front of me because I was just paranoid about crashing. And A bit like squirrels. Yeah, yeah, and that I need to move up in the bunch. And if it was raining and it was a bit of a miserable day and I was going up a mountain and I was getting dropped, I would debate my life choices and think, you know, this isn't fun, why am I doing this to myself? But then there were other times where it was good and I'd be riding along thinking how cool it was that I rode a bike for a living and all of that, and then thinking about how I rode a bike on a wooden velodrome. And then, you know, when you start thinking about things, and then it gets a bit weird because you've thought about it a little bit too much. That you know, I ride a bike and on a wooden velodrome. And, yeah, it got a bit weird. Yeah, there's still though. There's a gazillion unaccounted for hours of yeah. thought processes. I'm pretty convinced that we're actually not thinking about very much. A lot of junk hours. Yeah. I'm probably thinking more more than what Hank does though, because every time I ride with Hank, he just seems to have one line from a song. And he will repeat it over and over and over again. Out loud, may I, may I say, out loud. He won't know any of the other words to the song, just that one line, and it'll just be on repeat. To be fair to the guy, I'm pretty sure he's thinking about his next Instagram story as well, because that and often happens when out riding with Hank. You'll suddenly find him looking at his phone, pulling a funny face, and you go, mm. Instagram story. Yeah. Of course. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Um, now, we asked you lot as well what you thought about on the bike. And again, I think the, the theme seems to be not very much. Yeah, clearing of the head is a nice way to put it. Clearing the head. Which is definitely kind of underrated, just, you know, going out on your bike and just clearing your head. That is true. But there's plenty also that we can completely associate with as well, like Ems, who said, who put this hill here? I think that a lot on the bike too. Yeah. One from Ian MB. Have I got a puncture? Tire feels soft. No, there isn't a puncture. I'm imagining it. Repeat multiple times on a ride. Yeah, and brakes rubbing as well. Yeah, that's, uh, that's another good Are your brakes one. rubbing? Yeah. Uh, Stato said, uh, I usually zone out and enjoy my surroundings. That's admirable. Uh, mm. Sometimes I wonder if about house prices, if I'm going through a particularly nice oh, area. Yeah, I do like house spotting. Yeah. Nice houses. And another one from Ted Loaf. Work, work. Writing brings clarity, allowing me to sort out problems that a busy day doesn't have time for. And beer and pies. Yes, food. I relate mm. to that. I spend a lot of time thinking about food. Any kind of food, not just beer and pies. Dan, I'm pretty sure he just thinks about beer and not pies. Yeah, true. Yeah, when's the next pub stop for Dan? Yeah. Yeah, and the last one is in from Lil Annabelle. I think about my problems and cycling helps. Which I thought was a really nice one. Yeah. And it's true. Yeah, I think it can yeah. be true, can't it? Yeah, I like that very much. Make sure you lot get involved in the comment section down below. Let us know what it is that you're thinking about when you're riding the bike. Proper answers, but also the funnier the better. Mm. So uh, get involved. I'm going to enjoy reading those. And we'll pick a few out for next week as well. Let me know if you're scared of squirrels too. <laughs> 
GCN Inspiration Now, that part of the show where we pick out three of our favourite pictures or videos that you've uploaded to the GCN app, and all three win prizes, prizes that come from the GCN shop, like these T-shirts that uh, me and Manon are sporting <laughs> today. New colours for the GCN Cool range. I like them. Mm, nice. Very cool indeed. Right, should we crack on? Yes. So first up this week, one in from Ollie Bridgewood. If I don't win GCN Inspiration with this, it's rigged. Well, sorry, Ollie, I, I don't actually think you can win. GCN. No, it is rigged, isn't it? Yeah. Against GCN presenters, automatically uh, dropped from the competition, Ollie. See what you did there. Although, can we just say that is an absolute perler of a photograph, isn't it? Is, it? Yeah, it's quite nice, yeah. It's amazing, mm. yeah. The Dolomites look fantastic. Um, incidentally, whilst we're talking about photos, I did notice that uh, Ollie got beaten in the bike vault competition <gasps> this week as well. Hank got 898 <gasps> super nices to Ollie's that. 893. And I think it's because in Hank's, there was just a Colnago C68 with Campagnolo super record. Whereas in Ollie's, there was a Colnago C68 with Campagnolo super record and Ollie Bridgewood. Uh, Ollie, should, Ollie should know the bike vault rules. It needs to be a nice clean background. Yeah, no, not, no Ollie Bridgewood sits. That's it, <laughs> not with an Ollie Bridgewood. So, um, so yeah, he was penalised by five votes. Mm. So bad luck, Ollie. You might have to try again next week. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the proper GCN inspiration. And in third place this week, winning a GCN core, core blue beanie is Salem underscore Om. Best time for a ride. Hashtag morning ride. Very there you nice go, sunrise. that is cool. Wonder, Austria. I was going to say, I wonder where that is. Hashtag Austria. Yeah, hashtag Austria, hashtag the, hills, hashtag sun, hashtag fresh air. Hashtag, hashtag. No, that is seriously cool. I love that. that and it's beautiful. true, actually. Like, one of the nice things I found about getting older is getting up for sunrise is a lot less difficult these days. Is it? Yeah, there's no way on earth I'd have ever considered riding my bike at 6.30 in the morning. And now I'm like, oh, it's Saturday, I'm going to go out at 6.30 this morning. Um, and that is one of the reasons yeah. why. Absolutely amazing. That is stunning. Yeah, love that. Right, in second place, winning a GCN Keep Cup and an Elite Water Bottle is this one from Black Rabbit Pole. It's May in the Yukon. The days are getting longer, the sun is getting warmer, the gravel roads are starting to dry, the highways are freshly swept, and the mountain bike season is still a month away. However, the lakes are still frozen, so I'm making the most of the picturesque surroundings with a bit of fat biking. Mm. That is cool, isn't it? That is very cool. I'm also like, I mean, I know it never gets cold here in the UK, but the thought of it being snowy in May sort of blow my mind slightly. Yeah. I don't think I own enough clothes to, to be warm in that kind of weather. <laughs> no. cold. But there we go, that does look cool. That's what fat bikes were invented for. I mean, literally, mm. but that looks fantastic. I'll, I'll be well up for that. Yeah. And in first place this week, winning the plant-based cyclist book, a sweatshirt and a GCN towel is Flexitran.240. My bike was stolen back in February and I wasn't able to get back out on a bike until April. But this was one from the first ride I've done since getting the new bike. It's spring, but it feels like winter. <laughs> You're not in the Yukon, are you by any chance? Um, no, I love that. Do you reckon this is sunset? Sunrise? Uh, I don't know. If it's cold, it's probably going to be sunrise, isn't it? But yeah, I love that. I mean, that must be awful, heartbreaking to have to wait two mm. months to get back on your bike after it being stolen. One of the worst things. It really things. bugs me when people steal things that oh, aren't theirs. Goodness me, it's it really so gets annoying. To me. Yeah. There's only so much we can do about his bike riders, but one of the things is not buying stolen stuff. How do you want to know it's stolen though, do they? Well, sometimes you kind of know it's stolen. Do you? Well, if you're like, oh, that's a good deal. I wonder why someone's yeah. like misspelled the name and you're selling it for 20 quid. Yeah, true. You know. Maybe. But anyway, yeah, yeah. that is fantastic and a well deserved winner. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, congratulations. And please keep all of your amazing photos coming in, upload them to the GCN app, and we will pick three more winners next week. And now it's time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and we're going to start with news of Cycling Shorts. God, I love it when we can do that. You're such a nerd. Anyway, we're going to start with news that high street fashion brand Zara has just launched a full range of gravel 
clothing. And yep, you heard that right. And we're not just talking, you know, those fashionable sh cycling shorts. We've got a full-on men's and women's range. And we've got merino wool t-shirts, we've got jumpers, we've even got cap with ears. Yeah, their words, not ours. Yes. Now, there are three things about this range that we particularly like. This is more high street and less bike shop. So a merino t-shirt will cost about half or even two thirds of the price of one from a bike brand. Mm, although they do get a not good enough on sustainability website goodonyou.eco. Although it is better than some some of the actual bike brands. Indeed it is, yeah. Then we also love the fact that the women's range is wider than the men's range. It was a refreshing change from the bike industry norm. And then thirdly, in another refreshing change from the bike industry norm, their bib tights are being marketed as a cycling jumpsuit to be worn as a onesie. Yeah, so sleeveless jumpsuit with a round neck and pockets in the legs and the back. Don't know what you think, so funny, man. <laughs> You're not gonna wear that? It's just a very fashionable onesie. It's a strong I'd, look. I mean, I'd give it a go. I, th I think we should. Yeah. Here you go then. Right, from now on, your bib shorts are actually a cycling jumpsuit. Mm. Yeah. To wear it to the club. Moving on, uh, some news from close to home, very close to home, in fact, from Bath and Bristol in the UK, which is where we're based. Local hospitals and universities have invested nearly a million pounds in e-cargo bikes in what is going to be a year-long trial where they'll be using said bikes for delivering things around the cities, everything from printers and computers to medical supplies. And not only is it more environmentally friendly, it's quicker too, Definitely quicker, 100% quicker, especially in Bristol. And it is a lot easier when you come to park, because you can put a bike wherever you want with, within reason, but if you had a car or a van, you'd have to find somewhere to park, and then, you know, it's just a bit of a faff, isn't it? So hopefully this is going to be revolutionary. Yeah, cars. Just a bit of a faff. I think, that, faff. I think that's bang on. Uh, also, some slightly strange news coming from here in the UK. One of the country's largest mass participation rides, Ride London, announced via an email to participants late last week that they were going to be imposing a speed limit on the first and typically the fastest riders in the event by putting in a safety car that they would not be allowed to overtake. And the speed limit of the car is going to be set to 22 miles per hour, which on your own is pretty speedy but when you're in a bunch well you could probably go quite a bit quicker than that yeah so effectively it's going to be acting as a giant fun sponge for the fastest mm. riders as well as it's got to be said i think it's going to make it more dangerous because you're just going to end up with this huge group of riders bunched up and wanting to go quicker but they've got nowhere to go. So anyway, it's a shame. hopefully there's still time for the organisers to reconsider, particularly given that they're on closed roads. Yeah. yeah. Yes, please. No, I mean, <laughs> I'm sure there are reasons, but it does sound a little bit peculiar. Mm. We're going to finish on a very sad note now, I'm afraid. Up-and-coming gravel racer Mo Wilson was tragically shot and killed in Austin, Texas last week, and she was just 25. Yeah, police are saying that they're treating her death as suspicious, but there are no more details available at this time. What is sure, though, is just what a tragedy this is. She was bright, clearly super talented. She was the most dominant gravel racer this season in the US and flying on a mountain bike as well. In fact, she'd only just very recently been able to stop her normal job to focus on bike racing full time. So all from all of us here at GCN, we would like to offer our sincerest, deepest condolences to Mo's family and her friends. It's now time for Hack Full Slash Bodge. Starting with this one from Velo Hutch 72 Halfway around my local club's evening group ride, my seat post kept slipping. Stripped bolt, um, as it turned out. I got so hacked off, um, I rammed a gel wrapper in there. Goodness me, stayed up long enough to get me home. That's not a bad roadside mm. hack then, is it really? If it stops your seat post slipping. Someone did point out earlier, what if you know sometimes when you have a gel and you've had a gel and it gets a bit leaky, is that going to leak into the into the frame? Probably, but that's effectively just going to act like a glue, isn't it? Maybe that's I why guess, it worked. Yeah. I like that. True. It's like the new fibre grip, energy gel. 
heard it here first. Uh, that's a uh, hack from me. Yeah, I got hacked too, if it works. Yep, 61% yep. of you like said hack. You know what, that's a really good way of actually summarising it, isn't it? What's a hack? Well, if it works. Yeah, if it works. Brilliant, <laughs> genius. Right, next up, man. Next one in from Rich Clapham 81 uh, On a trip of a lifetime to the Pyrenees was adjusting disc brake calipers and the bolt sh shearded, um, rendering bike unrideable. Oh. Was desperate to ride um, the Tour Malette. Tourmalet. Uh, and was unable to extract bolt, however, was able to very cleverly, cleverly reattach using combination of super glue, masking tape, and for added strength, Insulation tape. No, you um, didn't. And then, a few, few spaces down, just kidding, it was purely to stop it rattling in the car. Oh my God, that is I think that heart stopping. Even if that would have worked, it would have been a bodge. 100% bodge. Yeah. You can't attach your front disc brake with, <laughs> with gaffer tape. Oh my word. Uh, okay, no, at least 71% uh, of you lot recognised that was a massive yeah. bodge, so... Uh, Cracky, you had us going there. Uh, right, David Jens45 has sent this very interesting one in. No delivery before July of the front shifting hanger, so I made a homemade stainless steel one instead, whilst waiting for the right part. That is cool. Like, I mean, part shortages at the moment are a right pain, yeah. aren't they? So if you can make your own, that's a hack from me. I'd say hack as well. Weirdly though, 58% of people say bodge. If that's you're saying bodge because it's reflection on Bianchi uh, not being able to deliver the part, then fair enough, but not on uh, this amazing hack from David. Oh, yeah, maybe they didn't read it properly. <laughs> <laughs> Next one in from Don Turner. Um, fork mounted bottle cages. Um, been going on some epic gravel rides recently and keep running out of water. My forks don't have a bottle cage mount, um, but they do have a mudguard mount. So we attached it. Um, not sure how happy I am with the thought of a loosely attached bottle cage next to my front wheel. It's like a squirrel. It is worse. like a squirrel, yeah. It's like you're carrying around two squirrels on the side of your bike, yeah, ready to jump out at you. I'm going to say a bodge. I think I'm going to say bodge. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, Don. Risky. Yeah, maybe if you kind of gave us a bit more information about how effectively they are mounted on, but I just think Velcro in a single bolt in, in a place like that leaves me feeling slightly nervous. Mm. Well, it was 22% hack, 78% botch. Okay, there we go. A lot of people thinking the same as us. Uh, and then Johnny N, uh, Johnny G, rather, gear hanger alignment tool. Used an old chair leg, few washers, two surplus bearings, and a hex bolt with 3D printed hack, bearing housings and slider. Works like a dream. Fair play to you for making that, Johnny. I'm not going to say, in nearly 30 years of cycling, I've never felt the need to own my own gear hanger alignment tool. But the fact that you made one... I did a video on how to use one the other day. Did you? Yeah. I, they, they, they work quite well. I mean, they do work yeah. really well, but I just... I've, I've never actually owned one. No. But... I guess it's good to have if you if you buckle your wheel quite a lot. Yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. That's Marlon's taking it. What are you no, going to go for? <laughs> hack or watch? I'm going to go hack. Hack. Well, because you're a big fan of the uh, gear hanger alignment yeah. tool. Yeah. And yeah. if you want to watch that video, it's available on GCN Tech <laughs> and also, right now. Also, I said if you buckle your wheel, that's not what it's for. No. No. Anyway, there we go then. Um, well, that's a hack from me because it's 3D printed. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Eighty percent hack. Nice. Nice. Done. Um, last one is in from, bear with me, Rob, Robert Odinglinton? I don't know. Robert, Robert Odinlangland? That's bit, your bit, name? Bit of a mouthful. Mm. Anyway, glasses organiser. Over 40 years of cycling and one tends to collect a lot of glasses. And I finally got, got tired of digging around in my cabinet trying to find the glasses. Um, I needed for my next ride. To end that, uh, with some wood, some screws, and a dab of glue um, here and there, I built this glasses organiser. That's amazing. I'm quite jealous of the amount of glasses. I was going to say, yeah, over Robert 40 has. years, you have amassed 
a very cool collection. And if that is a genuine timeline of cycling glasses... That would be cool. Yeah. Have you got, like, Brico era glasses? Have you got some, like, Oakley eye shades in there? I mean, I'm, I'm looking. I can't see any Brico's, if I'm honest. I'd love to be that cool and have that many glasses. I'd just be that, right, what glasses today? Oh, I'm feeling these. That is cool. Don't really cool. have that choice. Hack. So, 100, 100% hack. so much a hack, yeah, and 88% of you lot agreed as well. What a great way to finish up. Not anything slightly shonky, like squirrels attached to your fork blades. <laughs> no, we're going for sunglasses organizers. Brilliant. Keep your hacks and bodgies coming in. Same time next week, we'll go through some more. It's time now for Caption Competition, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. No guarantees it's going to be pink. But still, that would be cool if it was. It could be, yeah. Right, this was the image that you got last week. Matthew Vanderpool wanging a bouquet of flowers. And the winner, Manon, is. Noah Kepner. After laying down massive power levels to win the stage, Vanderpool demonstrates his softer side with flower power. Nice. I like that. It's cute. It is cute, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well done, Noah. Yeah, we'll give you uh, a water bottle for that one. Now, your chance to win. This week, all you've got to do, remember, is put a caption in the comment section down below. We'll pick a winner next week. And this is the photo that you've got to caption. That's Demi Vollering after her uh, clean sweep at a recent race down in Spain. Manon, you fancy having a pop at this one? Mm. Oh, <sighs> that was hard. <laughs> oh, this is as good as I got. That is good. I like it. But I feel like they could... If you could be some good ones on this one, I feel. It's like the anti-caption competition mm. caption. And yeah. I like that. Made me chuckle. Right. <laughs> get involved in the comment section down below. You might get yourself a GCN Elite water bottle. Right, before we tell you what's coming up on the channel this week, we've been having a sneaky look at the comments you've been leaving under some of the videos and under how to get pacing right. Um, Boris B commented, a well-paced video. Ah, Which I thought was quite cool. See what you did there, yeah. Boris. I like that. Um, under the GCN Hand Cycling Challenge, Wawa1013 said, Massive respect to hand cyclists. They're amazing athletes. Agreed, 100%. Um, I've got another comment. Got to give it to Hank for his enthousi enthusiasm. I mean, if he's got to do something, he absolutely goes for it. Um, and like a real cyclist, he crashes, realises he's not dead and has no broken bones and gets back, back on and finishes what he set out to do. <laughs> Which, uh, if you haven't seen that video of Hank crashing, it's definitely, definitely worth the watch. It is indeed, yeah. Peter Lawler said, um, I'm not sure if you read these, but I hope you do. We do, Peter, literally all of them. Um, thank you. This was both totally awesome as a way of demonstrating paracycling to the world and critically normalising a hand cycle. So uh, I hope you do more of these. So uh, yes, indeed, I think we probably will, actually. Um, Hank needs a bit of practice. Just a little set. bit, yeah. Um, and then under the Paris to Ancaster gravel race video I did, um, Frank commented, the Canadian spirit, in, spirit is on full display throughout, but on the 9.50 mark of the video just brought a tear of pride to my eye. Um, yeah, that was pretty cool to have all those people shout my name. It was, um, was an yeah. amazing video, that man. On. If oh, you've not you. watched it yet, you have to check it out. It was super cool. Canadian people are pretty cool as well. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. There's just The whole thing looks absolutely fantastic. <laughs> um, and then under another amazing ride, actually, under Hank and Ollie's epic ride in the Dolomite, Cycling Wanderer said, this is the most stunning GCN epic video I have ever watched. I was thinking of touring Cornwall and Wales this August here in the UK, but at this point, I might end up heading to the Dolomites instead. Baffled, by the way, by Ollie's climbing skills, putting good old Hank to shame. There, well, there were a lot of comments about how good Ollie was climbing. Well, yes, he, like, he absolutely was. Yeah. Ollie uh, was dropping Hank at every possible opportunity. I wonder why. But uh, anyway, no. Payback. It's, it's, <laughs> payback. It's got to be said, Ollie is a machine when it comes to long alpine climbs. And also, poor old Hank, well, he's been living the high life in Tuscany, hasn't he? Mm. If you have seen the GCM Plus film that launched, well, today actually, so you probably haven't seen it yet, but do make sure you head over and check it out. Hank and his dad... They're back. ...living the high life in Tuscany whilst uh, spectating Strada Bianca. So you've got to watch it. It's, uh, it's cool, and let us know what you think about it. Welcome to Tuscany. Is there anywhere on Earth as beautiful and as rich 
as Tuscany. It's home to one of the world's greatest one-day races, Strada Bianchi. Ale, ale, ale! So Dad knows nothing about bike racing. Oh, what's happening now? And I know nothing about wine. Okay. So I thought it'd be the perfect opportunity to have some quality father and son time together. Stop going on about your motorbike. And learn each other's hobbies. I was going to have a nice quiet pee around the corner and just bumped into a couple of nuns. And what was I thinking? Dad's going to come in and go, Jimbo, we've got to take in the wine, the vino. And... You promised me a motorbike food and wine tour of Tuscany. Oi! Oi! This bike is great. Have you done the nether regions? I've done a circle. Lorenzo would not be proud of that. What is that? Wow, that's fantastic! We embrace an Italian classic to chase the race. You ready to give a cheer? Here they come. Alle, alle, alle! I don't get this dust bit. Why are you so fascinated by dust? So this one's all about, Dad. The white road to Tuscany. Oh, look, just look cool for a minute. Look cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, just try and look cool. <laughs> right, you got the matches? No, you bought the matches. No, you've got the matches. Dad, I told you to bring the matches. You've never told me to get the matches. Brilliant, Jimbo. Right, let's move on to what's coming up on the channel this week. On Wednesday, we've got How Not to Corner, and then on Thursday, we've got Signs You're Feeling a Little Burnt Out. Yeah, and on Friday, it's Retro Bike versus Killer Climb. So the, uh, the Eddie Merckx race bike that we painstakingly recreated for a GCN Plus documentary is now going to be put through its paces up our local killer climb. Can it and I get up it? Then on Saturday, Hank has been challenging a paramotorist to a commuting challenge, so you've got to watch that. Absolutely bonkers. And then on Sunday, on Sunday, Ollie bought the cheapest Pinarello he could find on eBay and then tried to ride it up the Stelvio, so you've got to check that one out as well. Yeah, that looks Fair like an absolute belter. Yeah. Putting his climbing prowess to good use yeah. again. Yeah, well, it's at last. Hmm? Oh! Oh, <laughs> oh man! Oh, my word. On that note, we should probably leave it there and wrap yes, up the GCN show for another week. Thank you very much for watching. Please give it a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed.